Greetings. A few years ago, I uploaded a video demonstrating how to get typed responses out of uh, PsychoPy. And PsychoPy has actually changed quite a bit uh, since that video. And the code that I uh, have in that old video worked at the time, but it doesn't really work anymore. So today we're going to look at an updated version of uh, the code uh, for getting typed responses out of PsychoPy. And uh, this will work both uh, locally or online. So if you're running experiments on Pavlovia, I'm going to show you the code you need in order to get typed responses there. So let's keep this really simple here. We have a simple uh, trial routine. And in order to get a typed response, there's a couple things you need. First, you need a text object. And you can really call this whatever you want. So we'll call this text input, let's say. Um, you can do whatever you want to the layout, appearance, none of that matters. The only thing that you uh, must set up in order for my code here to work is you have to change the text to dollar sign resp display, and you have to set that to update every frame. So set every frame. Uh, we'll leave all the other parameters as uh, default. Actually, we'll set the duration to infinite. Uh, the next thing you might want is a prompt. Uh, so some kind of uh, question that you're posing to your subjects. You don't need this part, but I'm going to add one just for good form. So I'm going to say, type in your response. And I'll adjust the layout so that it's a little bit above uh, my input. Oh, and I will set its display also to be infinite. All right, so that's just the display part of the code. The crux of how you get typed responses from uh, subjects is you need a keyboard uh, uh, component and you need a code component. So let's start with the keyboard component. Now again, for my code that I'm sharing with you here today, this keyboard component must be called KeyResp, uh, capital R in the resp. Uh, you want it to last forever. And under allowed keys, this is where you uh, enter all the keys that you're going to allow into your typed responses. So for instance, you could go A, uh, B, C, D, etc., and go through the entire alphabet. And then you could get uh, uh, text responses. You could also uh, simply input digits. And then you could get numerical responses. Uh, you could do both if you wanted. So after we enter the last number, we could then start entering letters. Um, in our case, we're going to keep it simple for today, and I'm just going to accept numerical responses. And you also need to accept return and backspace. And with this simple keyboard object, we'll now be uh, ready to uh, start to take in typed responses. One thing you want to make sure you uncheck is force end of routine because if this is checked, then when a keyboard uh, key is pressed, then the whole routine will end, but we don't want that. We want the routine to continue until return is pressed, and you'll see how that works in a moment. Uh, the other thing that you need to do is come into the data uh, tab here and change the store from the last key to all keys. Basically, what uh, keyboard objects do by default is they simply store one key response. But we actually want all the keys to be stored because we want multiple keys to be pressed so that we can get a typed response. And you can click OK. The last thing we need is code. Uh, I'll call this code resp, but you can call it really whatever you want. Um, there's three areas where we're going to be inserting code here. We're going to have some code at the beginning of the routine. We're going to have some code that executes every frame. And we're going to have some code at the end of the routine. And we're going to change code type from uh, auto to both. Because uh, I have, uh, in the description below, provided some files that give you the Python or the JavaScript code that you need to put into the begin routine, the each frame, and the end routine in order to run this experiment either locally, if it's Python, or online, if it's Java. So first, let's look at the Python code. So here is the code that we're going to be inserting. You can see that in the files that I've provided for you, you can download this again from the description down below, um, there's some code that you're going to want to be inserting at the beginning of the routine. There's code that you want to insert uh, every frame. 
down to here, and then there is one line of code for the end of the routine. So let's go ahead and insert this, and then we'll go over what the code is actually doing. So begin routine, every frame, and end routine. Now this code is pretty simple. Um, in the begin routine area, we're setting up some default variables. So resp display is basically what uh, a subject has typed in. And this is what we're gonna display to subjects. And it's also what we're going to ultimately log under the subject response area of uh, the data file. So this end routine is just logging what the subject sees and what they see is what they've typed. Um, and you, if you remember when we set up text input, we made it uh, equal to rest display. So rest display is going to be our, our variable where we uh, construct what subjects have been typing in. Max resp is just the maximum number of uh, you know characters you want to allow a subject to type. You could make this 20, 32, however much you want. My By default, mine here is just set to six. So you can change this parameter if you want subjects to type in longer strings for you. Um, then we have a few variables that are defined for what I'm calling my key logger. And the key logger really operates in uh, every single frame of uh, this trial. So what the key logger is doing um, is it is pulling the key response object and looking at all the keys that have been typed in, and it's looking to see if a new key has been pressed. So between the last check and right now, has uh, the, the list of keys that have been pressed increased beyond what we saw last time. So that's what last length is. Um, if it has increased, it means a key has been pressed. And so now we go into the logic of figuring out what that key was um, and then processing it. So first of all, we update the length uh, that we expect to find next time because we're going to process this most uh, currently pressed key. Then we we maintain ourselves a key list, which is by default set to nothing uh, at the beginning of this routine. But we maintain ourselves a key list, which we then grab the most recent key from the key response into. Now, if you're familiar with my older code, we didn't have this sort of key logger variable. We just directly looked at the keys and we directly tried to pull keys in and out of uh, the key response object. And PsychoPy has changed such that that no longer works. So if you go and try and use my old code, it will fail because you can't really manipulate uh, this variable directly so much anymore. Um, but that's fine. Um, so we will have our own key list uh, that we will grow and shrink as need be. Uh, if the backspace was pressed, then we go ahead and we take the backspace out of the key list and we remove one more key if we can. That's the idea of backspacing and erasing an item. Um, if return was pressed, then we go ahead and remove that return key and then we check to see, in my case, if at least uh, two other characters have been typed. So here's one other parameter you might want to change. This is the minimum number of, in our case, digits that a subject has to type in before they're allowed to press enter. And this just prevents people from pressing enter when they haven't typed anything or when they've only put in one digit, let's say. Um, in our case, we want two. You could change this to zero if you want them to be able to press enter and having typed nothing. You could change it to five if you want them to type in five letters or numbers, uh, whatever you want. Now this code down here simply goes through and checks to make sure we haven't typed in uh, a longer response than we're allowed to according to our maximum response length. And if we have, we remove any excess keys. Um, and then we set the response to display variable to be equal to basically our key list squished together. So our list of all the keys have been pressed turned into a string. And that's basically all there is to it. Uh, we could go ahead and insert a loop here. Uh, let's say that we want to have, I mean, random, sequential, doesn't matter because uh, nothing is being selected. But let's say we want to get five inputs. And just so we can clearly see uh, the difference between trials, I'm going to insert a 500 millisecond blank period here. So 0.5 and no text. There we go. So let's go ahead and type in five digits. So type in your response. So you can see I can type in digits. I can't type in more than six 
uh, responses. I'm pressing a button right now. Nothing is being typed in. I can press backspace to uh, undo what I've typed in. Um, if I try and press enter, having only typed in one digit, I can't end. But if I type in two digits and I press enter, I can move on to the next trial. And so you can see I'm looping through and I'm typing in various responses. Um, now, our data is being logged under subject response. So if we look into our data file, we will see a subject response variable, and here are the five uh, digits that I typed in. Um, also notice, interestingly, that response keys, .keys maintains a history of all the keys I pressed. And remember I said I typed 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then I was pressing 5, and I was saying, look, it won't let me type any more keys. Well, look, PsychoPy has actually logged every single 5 that I pressed. Then I pressed a bunch of backspaces to show you I could erase and so on. So response keys, .keys actually maintains a full history of absolutely every key that was pressed. Um, but subject response is just what was the final typed uh, item uh, from the subject. Okay, so how do we do this online? Uh, well, it's pretty simple. Uh, everything that we set up here already is exactly what you would do for an online study. The only difference is that you need some JavaScript code. You basically need this in JavaScript form. And so this is where the other file uh, that I provided for you guys in the description down below this is where the other file comes in handy. It has the exact same code only in a JavaScript form. So let's copy the uh, begin routine code and that will go in the begin routine. Notice that it is essentially identical uh, because we're really just assigning variables and JavaScript and Python work almost the exact same way uh, for that. Now we need the every frame code, and it goes down to here. And we need the end routine code, which is this. All right, so the begin routine is obviously very similar. Same with the end routine. Rather than this experiment.addData, it's just uh, psychojs.experiment.addData, but otherwise it's identical, and this will log uh, the data in the exact same way. If you look at each frame, things are similar, but the syntax is just a little different for JavaScript. Uh, we have this extra check at the initial if statement because the way uh, you know Pavlovia works after it's converted your PsychoPy experiment is that key response dot keys will actually be an undefined variable until a key has been pressed. So what we're saying here is if key response Dot keys is undefined, then just skip this whole thing. Don't even do anything. Um, once a key has been pressed, then we can start checking the length. And so here's the same check that we're doing over here. The format's just slightly different. Uh, getting the last length that we'll expect next time is right here. Again, format's just slightly different. Uh, and you can go through and you can see that more or less everything has a corresponding JavaScript uh, section it's just especially for you know a line like this it's really nice in python um, it just has to be expanded a little bit in javascript and we use a slightly different technique of getting the same outcome um, but anyway the logic behind it is identical and at the end we produce a response display variable which is what we're going to be displaying so with our javascript code we can go ahead and update our online experiment here and I've gone ahead and already created the experiment on Pavlovia. If you haven't done this, you'll be prompted to create an experiment. And so I'm going to go to my experiment page. And I will click on pilot. And my experiment comes up. I say, OK, please type in your response. And once again, we can type in a series of digits and it will accept them. And that's basically it. Now, you may be noticing that between trials here, there's a really brief ghost image of the previous response. Try as I might, I can't get that to go away. So if anyone watching this video has any cool tips or tricks on maybe a little tweak we could add to my code to make that ghost image disappear, uh, I would be delighted to hear it. Uh, but, uh, you know, at least being able to get typed responses uh, in PsychoPy easily online I think, uh, you know, it's a small price to pay. So there you have it. That's how you get typed responses in PsychoPy easily. Um, I hope this video was useful for you. If it was, 
Please like the video, share it, and otherwise, good luck programming your experiments. Alrighty, guys. Until the next one.